This episode is sponsored by Gamergy, the gaming energy drink made by gamers for gamers. Check it out in four great flavors, Purple Nurple, Red Alert, Binary Blue, and Epic Green. Hi guys, we're back here at Planet Comic Con Day 2 and we stopped by Ebony Warrior Studios, winner of Cosplay Melee Episode 1. Such a fantastic show, I loved it a whole lot. And I'm here with Xavier, representing Ebony Warrior Studios. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you, man? I'm doing fantastic. I'm glad you put on the Pacific Rim. I was hoping you were going to wear it today. So that's a treat for me. So thank you so much. But uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. We don't want to take too much of your time. So what initially got you into the world of cosplay? I think what really got me into cosplay, one, was the fact that I got to um, get out of my introversion and be, you know become these characters a lot of these characters are not like me so become somebody else the other thing would be this idea of representation yep. there's not many POCs um, you know black POCs within the world of cosplay especially ones doing you know big things so I want to uh, I want to be able to sh you know represent in that way in the way that the things that I do one of my personal heroes, Night Mage, I look up to him a whole lot. He's a big inspiration for me, has been for years. So I, I understand what you mean, and thank you guys for doing that. But um, So how long have you been cosplaying? I've been cosplaying for about uh, 10 years now. 10 years? All right, well, it shows. <laughs> um, so I've picked out some of my favorites here, but do you have any favorites that you've done over the past 10 years? With uh, mine being, I'm going to throw these up in the video if that's yeah. okay. This Garrus, uh, of course your cosplay melee winner. Um, De uh, Destiny and uh, Batman. Mm. But what were, what were some of your favorites? I think probably uh, Gypsy Danger is one of my favorites because okay. uh, she was uh, she took the most work and it's the best paint job that I've ever done. So it, it shows. It shows. Well, um, what is your process from conception to completion? What does that look like for you? What what is it some what that you like to do to go from the idea to this uh, concept to creation is typically a whole bunch of reference imagery. Okay. Then from there, it just uh, uh, drawing my templates out. Oh, okay. Then um, taking those to foam and building, and it just you know it's, it, it works up from there. Do you do your own original sketches first, or is it just a lot of you know stuff that you find on the internet? I mean, which one do you think is easier? I guess um, they're both the same process, okay. right, whether it's a uh, my own original work or it's um, you know making something from a movie or video game it's all the same process I'm drawing everything from scratch all right all right how many cosplays have you done to date oh man probably around 15 I 15? think 15 or more cosplays to date I see I see that I, I understand why though there's a lot of quality in your work I, it was really hard to pick I usually don't pick four I think that's the most I picked so if that tells you something, you know, but um, so uh, have you cosplayed your favorite character? And if so, what has that experience been like for you? I don't think I've necessarily cosplayed my favorite character. I have quite a few characters that I enjoy and that I love. Gypsy Danger has been on my list for quite a while. So it was awesome to finally have her done. Um, you know, Gypsy Avengers on my list. And um, I've got, uh, actually, I want to do Halo 5 Arbiter at some point, because okay. um, that'll give me the chance to do Digigrade feet and stilts, so I have quite a few um, that I want to do. I've j I, I don't want to necessarily say that I have ones that are, you know, cosplays that are my favorite that I want to do. It's just bigger. I want to do bigger and better with everyone. All right. Um, so... No, no secret here, you were featured on the first episode of Cosplay Melee and won the first ever Cosplay Melee. What was that experience like? You, you were being the first, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it, when it came to building on the show, it was more like um, it was more like I was working at home with just you know cameras on me because I, I, I wasn't going to do something new and something I wasn't used to because that would have ruined my flow. So being able to, you know, work the same way that I work at home, like in Cosplay Melee, I worked on the floor most of the time, okay. and at home I will work on the floor. So it was kind of like working at home, but with, you know, a whole lot more tools and a whole lot more uh, attention. I, I imagine that their tool library and their, you know, their, their uh, the items that they have at your disposal was a little bit more than you usually have? Okay. So, um... Although I applaud your choice for character, because I'm a huge Star Wars fan myself, 
maybe there aren't those that wouldn't understand like the choice of it. What, was there a reasoning behind your choice? Because uh, a crime lord, we, we, we see examples of crime lords in uh, Hondo Abaka and uh, Jabba the Hutt, but we never really see this guy that looks like a Mando almost, but not. What was the reasoning behind that choice? I think the, uh, the reasoning behind that character, one, it was because um, I had a, a, a design before that. I was going to make my own sort of like Darth Vader-esque Sith Lord, but then I didn't want to be generic, you know? I wanted to do something original. Okay. So when I was coming up with the concept art, I was thinking, okay, I like, I really enjoy the Old Republic. I want, a, I want a character that's not going to be mainstream Star Wars. I want to show another side of Star Wars that people don't often see. So people don't often see the underworld. I wanted to, you know, create this crime lord and then use a vibro weapon with him because you don't ever see those things and in Star Wars and they're they're always they're there. It's just I wanted to bring it to the you know the spotlight. You're, you're preaching. Old Republic is my favorite. I'm, I don't know if you know, but uh, the guys behind Game of Thrones are doing a whole new trilogy. I'm hoping they're delving into Old Republic because that would just make my day. Um, so you talked a little bit about the Vibro polearm. Very untraditional when it comes to mainstream Star Wars. Right. Um, what, I mean, you said that you don't. it's because people don't really see it very often. Is, was there any reason do you like Vibro weapons, the idea of them yourself? Yeah, I love the idea of Vibro weapons, but it was also the fact that I didn't want my character to use a blaster or a lightsaber. You see those way too much. I wanted my character, if I was going to win with something original, I wanted it to be something that you don't often see. I want it to, to bring light to another side of Star Wars. And I love Vibro weapons. You know, Jabba's guards use Vibro weapons, but you, nobody ever talks about it. So I wanted to make my own Vibro Spear. I was, I, I gotta admit, I was very afraid because I thought you, that might hurt you a little bit, but I'm glad that you chose it because it just shows your knowledge and shows how much you care about, you know, the, the fandom. So, um, so too many in the cosplay community, for example, my wife, uh, to many you've become a role model in the African American community, and like in 28 days of cosplay, of uh, black cosplay. What does that feel like being such a positive role model for that kind of, for that community? It's incredibly powerful because I want to be able to bring a spotlight to what we can do. I don't want it to be all about me. I want it to be about us as a whole. So being able to show people that people of color are in cosplay and that they can do amazing things, I want people to understand that we need more representation. We need to spotlight other cosplayers or cosplayers of colors more. And I want people to, um, you know, I want people to recognize what we can do. So it's it's just it's it's incredibly powerful when somebody says they're a fan or says that I'm a role model to them. Because I started off, you know, just doing this just to, you know, I wanted, I just wanted some armor. I, I didn't think it would grow to the where it would be now. Well, you are a role model. My wife and I look up to you very much. It's, we, we haven't delved into armor yet, but it's because of people like you and Night Mage and, you know, people like that, that we're going to. We're actually, we actually took some classes and we're, we're going to give it a try. So, I'm hoping to have my first armor cosplay done by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, now we just talked about you being a role model. Is there a lot of pressure in doing that, in, in being this? You know, do you, is it easy or is it difficult for you at times? I'm not going to say it's easy, but I'm not going to say that it's you know this really like this, I wouldn't say there's a lot of pressure. I would say that it's you always have to be mindful of. Um, what you're putting out into the spotlight. That's why I always want to focus on, uh, I want my cosplay to focus on representation and fighting, um, you know, bigotry, racism, um, bullying. That's, that's always what my stuff has been about. So as long as my, as long as my mission, as long as I don't, you know, turn away from my mission, I don't think it's really, you know, that uh, a difficult thing to do. I understand completely what you say. I mean, um, I, I don't try to compare or anything, but I'm a heavier set man myself, and I don't cosplay characters outside of my size type usually. Doing something like a Tie Fighter pilot, I've heard I've heard comments. I've heard you know, and it's it's like I said, I won't I don't compare because everybody has their own experiences. But it's nice to see that people will not allow that bigotry or hatred to ruin their experience. So 
I mean, thank you for that. Now, the 28 Days of Black Cosplay that's been going on for a few years now has been a positive way of showcasing amazing talent from the community. Do you think it's working? Is it is it a po is it been a positive source and is it working right now? Do you think? I think it's extremely positive, but I think a lot of people tend to um, forget that black cosplay is not relegated to 28 days. It's 365 days of black yes. cosplay. So I want people to understand that yes, we have a month where we get to hi highlight black cosplayers, but we shouldn't just leave that as the month where we co highlight those cosplayers or black cosplayers in general. We should be getting highlighted all year long at all times because then it you know it, it becomes this thing where okay, you have to be sequestered over here. Black cosplayers have to be sequestered and it, it, that it crea creates more div um, more divisiveness. I love 28 days of black cosplay, but it's not just 28 days. It's 365 days. Perfect answer. I love it so much because yeah, I mean, a lot of people get stuck in the rut, you know, it's okay, here it is, 28 days, now we're done, let's go back to the normal. I, I like that answer. Um, so not only are you a huge inspiration to the cosplay community for your uh, anti-African American cosplayers, I feel you're an inspiration to male cosplayers, because sometimes it can feel like it's a female driven field. What advice would you give a man who's entering the cosplay arts? Honestly, it's all about, um, it's just being you. It, it should cosplay first of all you shouldn't be coming into cosplay thinking okay I need to beat such and such or I need to be better than anybody else you should be focusing on your craft you should be focusing on what it is that makes your cosplay special before anything else so I don't really yes there's a I mean female cosplayers tend to dominate the cosplay world but it's my goal to be, you know, to get my stuff spot spotlighted by making my stuff as big and as amazing as I possibly can. I'm focusing on my detail, my every everything that I put into my cosplay. I just put my heart and soul into it, so people tend to see that. So I'm not trying to beat anybody else. I'm just trying to, you know, do the very best that I can. I like that answer. I mean, and yeah, I'm not, and, I, and I, I hope that nobody thinks that I'm saying that it's a female drip. It, it, it is a little female heavy, but and sometimes it can be hard for, a, you know, but I like I like that answer. Just do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you do it for yourself, you're gonna have a good time no matter what. Yeah. So I'm gonna skip this question because you kind of already answered it. What does cosplay mean to you? It's, yeah. it's all about yourself. Um, so are there any projects in the works right now that you can uh, maybe give us a spoiler or two about? What do you, what, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I like that smile. Maybe he's got something for us guys. I actually, I have um, uh, Transformers The Last Night me version of Megatron. Ooh. I'm really excited about that one. I'm going to get started on that one soon. I like that his helmet has these big mandibles that come around the front and he carries a sword and a shield. So I always love medieval fantasy, so the idea that I get to make this futuristic robot that carries a sword and a shield, yeah, it's going to be fun. I like that. I like that. Well, first of all, if I can, I just want to thank you so much. And I, I mean, I don't, I can say it once, I can say it a hundred times, you are a big inspiration, not only to me, but to a lot of people out there. So everything you do, I know that for people that I know, we appreciate it, so thank you. And uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We're at Planet Comic Con. I hope you guys get a chance to come out here. If not, come out next year. Come check out these amazing cosplayers. I'll put all your information in the description below. Show uh, Xavier and Ebony Warrior Studios some love. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure you uh, Sith Lightning that like button. And if you're new, use the force to subscribe. And we'll catch you guys next time. Bye!